Greetings friends, Aaron here with a very historic Meta Minute report. Today, SpaceX yet again made history as it successfully launched its fifth Starship mission and it somehow was able to catch the massive booster in a special pair of claws, or chopsticks as they like to call it, on the first attempt. This achievement marks a major milestone towards SpaceX goal of making Starship a fully reusable rocket system. Musk's Starship blasted off 8.25 a.m. Eastern Time from its Starbase facility near Brownsville, Texas. Then the rocket's super-heavy booster returned to land in the arms of the company's launch tower nearly seven minutes after the launch. The forward part of the Starship, separated as planned, traveled halfway around the world then landed in the Indian Ocean. It's important to mention that no one has ever caught a rocket booster before in a pair of iron claws, and many onlookers, even employees at SpaceX, expected this to fail in the first attempt. Now, if you follow the SpaceX history at all, you undoubtedly witness many explosions, or as Musk likes to call them, rapid, unplanned disassemblies, and today this certainly was not the case. For those unfamiliar, Musk's Starship is the vessel that he claims will soon be used to take humans back to the moon and then eventually to Mars. Starship has been designed to be completely reusable and as successful would significantly lower the cost for human space travel, exploration, maybe even colonization. Starship is both the tallest and most powerful rocket ever launched. Fully assembled, the Super Heavy Booster Starship stands at 397 feet tall and is about 30 feet in diameter. The Super Heavy Booster, which stands 232 feet tall, is what starts the rocket's journey to space. At its base, our 33 Raptor engines, which together can create 16.7 million pounds of thrust, or about twice as much as NASA's space launch system that was used in 2022. It's amazing to think that we're now able to board a vehicle, leave the Earth, view it from perspective that only God himself was able to see before, and then safely return home to share what we've learned with others. The more people who travel into space and the more commercial space tourism grows, the quicker we'll hopefully see an end to the flat Earth madness, which is currently growing in a fringe portion of the church. But that's a topic for another day. Thanks for your time and interest. Please let me know what you think about this report in the comments, and we'll see you next time.